Today I'm here with a comparison between the iPhone and iPod Touch App Store versus the Android market. So there are a lot of key differences between these two philosophies. Uh, generally the iPhone App Store tends to be a bit more of a curated experience. Uh, it doesn't really let as many apps in, they don't have as quite as much freedom, however typically they do tend to be a little bit higher quality compared to the Android market which while sometimes you might find a little bit of a lower quality app, you can pretty much get anything you want including emulators, um, you know, different scans. I mean, there's a wide, wide variety of applications. So what I'm going to do for you guys today is do a little bit of a comparison, show you guys some of the pros and cons of each app store. Okay, so when you first open up both app stores, you'll find a fairly similar interface. So both allow you to take a look at some of the features. So on the iPhone, the iPod Touch, you'll notice that there are a few things such as App of the Week, Game of the Week. Um, you'll see that there's a wide variety of different uh, featured apps. And there's also a category for What's Hot, which is basically the same thing. And you also can use Genius, which I actually don't use, but if you'd like to use it, you can uh, allow it to take a look at the apps that you've bought and suggest new things based on what you've pr pur purchased previously. Um, on the other hand, the Android market looks a little bit nicer. As you can see here, it's got a little bit of a, uh, a smoother interface, if, if you will. Um, you also do have the featured apps. And something you should notice is that a lot of these apps are free. And that's going to be a recurring theme in this. Uh, Android apps do tend to be free a little bit more often. But I will get into that in just a minute. Um, up top there's a little carousel so you can take a look at the uh, some more featured apps. So anything jumps out at you, you can take a look at it. You can also sort by games. You can sort by apps, which is of course just all games. Or you can search by carrier specific apps. Um, now that is obviously going to depend on your carrier. However, on this phone obviously we do have that. Um, so over here, if we come over to the iPhone, you'll see that we have a few different things as far as the top 25. In fact, we can go ahead and go into the apps and do the same on the Android phone. Um, so if we want to just take a look at the top paid on both, it should be a pretty interesting thing. Um, you know, over here, you can see a lot of this is like the ROM managers. In fact, I'll open this up, and that is a really interesting thing as. Obviously, to get this these kind of features in a iPhone or an iPod Touch, you basically need to jailbreak. And now, there's nothing wrong with against jailbreaking. In fact, I jailbreak pretty much always. Um, but it is much nicer if you're into customizing, modding, tweaking, all that kind of good stuff on your phone. Android definitely has you beat here. Um, obviously, some of these do pay, or rather, are paid. Um, but it's not that big a deal, and certainly it's a lot easier just to pay a couple of dollars and get all the features you want rather than having to spend a lot of time and try to jailbreak and worry about stuff breaking, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, now, as far as the top paid apps, actually, let me back up a little bit here and go over to the games and show you guys. Because typically, games are, well, obviously, they're not the number one thing, but if you take a look at the uh, iOS app store, all you see is games, pretty much. Now, let's take a look at what the apps themselves look like. So, in fact, we'll pull up the same app. Fruit Ninja on here as well as on the Android phone. As you guys can see here, I definitely do prefer the interface. Uh, it definitely does look a lot nicer. Um, the app stores pretty much look the same for the past couple of years. I mean, it's, it's certainly not bland. You can take a look at uh, the ratings. You can see the price. If I just want to tap on that, I can buy it. Uh, and there's just a bunch of information about it and all that kind of good stuff. And if we scroll down, we can take a look at screenshots. Um, and then again, we can go report a problem and read ratings. Um, now over here on the Android phones, you can see here we can read the same description. In fact, I, it's probably the exact same description as over here. Um, you can take a look. Also, you can take a look at uh, screenshots. So if that looks good to you, you can go, oh yeah, I want to buy that app. And you can also share and take a look at reviews once again. So uh, the way they work is very similarly. Um, now as far as purchasing apps, it does work a little bit differently. Um, now if you have an iPhone or an iPod Touch using the App Store, you have a couple of different options. Now it is tied to your iTunes account. So for example, let's say you have a, an iTunes gift card. Of course, you, know, you can go to the store and buy 15, 25, etc, etc gift cards. We can just load that up, no problem using that. Um, or you can have it hooked up to your de credit or debit card if I want to buy this app, just have it automatically deducted from your account. It works pretty similarly on the Android side. However, it is a little bit different as uh, there's no uh, you know gift cards or anything like that. You pretty much do have to hook it up to your account. Um, but I found that it's a pretty painless procedure on both sides. Now, I've just got to say this straight up. There's no definitive winner. Android is not a million times better than iOS, and iOS is not a million times better than Android. Both of these are really mature app stores. They both have in the tens, and I believe actually probably hundreds of thousands of apps. So you're not going to have any issues. Uh, the only really reason that you would have a major issue is if you're looking for one specific app that might be on you know, the iPhone, not Android, or vice versa. Uh, but overall, I found that both app stores are really nice, user-friendly, intuitive to use, and they also have a wide variety of apps. Now, as far as the pricing goes, 
Uh, that is something I really want to kind of dance around because, it, of course, it does vary you know hugely between the devices. Um, in fact, as you guys saw there, one app was a dollar twenty. Well, it's ninety nine cents there. So occasionally, you know, it might be a little bit more expensive here or there. Um, but overall, I've actually found that Android apps tend to be free. In fact, a lot of the Angry Birds, which are ninety nine cents on the App Store, are uh, free on Android. Although they, of course, do have ads. So you know, you're you're, you're going to have a little bit of a trade off. But anyway, if you're going, you know, trying to compare between getting an iPhone or an Android phone just based on the App Store, uh, it's going to be kind of a hard call. The Android market is definitely a lot more open. You can find stuff such as rooting um, and all kinds of different stuff like ROM managers in addition to your wide variety of games and standard apps. On the other hand though, the iPhone definitely does have a bit more of a curated experience. It's not as open, you're not going to see the same amount of things, you know, such as the, the, the stuff that like the ROM managers and all that kind of stuff. But what you will find is a lot of really nice polished apps and really, a lot of nice games. So no matter which way you go, I really find it hard to go wrong.